All right, guys, welcome back. We got a um, 2009 G6 GXP, and we have a check engine light. I'm going to run through this quick. Pulled codes all using our um, uh, diag gun here. Got a PO443, and it failed. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it passed this ignition and failed. So it's seeing a circuit issue here, okay, control circuit problem. I'm going to go back. I think I know where the problem is on this vehicle already, but I'm going to go through this quickly and make sure. Uh, we're going to go to actuation test, output control. We're going to go to EVAP. I hit the wrong thing. And we're going to go to purge solenoid. Hopefully this is coming in clear. I'm trying to get better lighting here for the scan tool. Um, we're going to increase, and we can hear the purge working, okay? Now, what I did was, I'm going to back out of that. What I did was I hooked up my Vantage Pro here. I'm going to get you guys a shot of this. You can see what we're doing, hopefully. All right, we're at 12 volts. What I did here is my connections are two leads, two channels, one on, one on the power feed to the solenoid, the other one on the control circuit of the solenoid. So, I'm trying to set this camera back up so I don't drop you guys. Actually, I will drop these a little bit. All right, so we have... The yellow trace is our power feed into the solenoid. Our green trace is the is the uh, control side of the solenoid. All right. So we're going to see as it goes through the solenoid at rest, 12 volts. Okay. We're going to have 12 volts on both sides of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the harness, and I'm going to just move the connector around a little bit and monitor the voltage. There it is. See the dropouts? See those dropouts there? I'm moving, I'm very slightly moving the connector. Gently, okay? But as you can see, we are dropping out on the control side. All right, we're not losing the power feed to the solenoid, we're losing the control side. So the computer's seeing that drop out and it's setting a code, right? So we do not have a bad purge solenoid here. What we have is a connector issue or the wiring going into the pigtail itself is, is faulty, okay? There's, that's where we're at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a closer look here like I said I am right at the I'm gonna show you again I am right at the I'm right at the solenoid here as close as I could get to the pigtail okay to the connector and I'm showing dropouts so my wire going back further than that obviously is not broke the problem is right at the connection or right at the pigtail you follow what I'm, if you follow what I'm saying all right see those spikes see this dropouts here see the voltage dropping on the there it's actually out now there it's back okay all I'm doing is moving this wire around a little bit the connector and I'm getting these uh, getting these dropouts so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off And I'll unplug my solenoid. I'm trying to get you guys, keep you guys in view here of what I'm doing, best I can. Uh, 
my light here. Hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing. And what I want to do is I just want to simply go to the connector here and I want to pull on it gently. And here's your issue. We have a we have a bad connection, a, a broken wire in the insulation at this uh, pigtail. So putting a solenoid in here is not going to fix this car. All right. I know these fail a lot on GMs, guys. I know it's the you know a high failure rate. This is not a problem on this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can repair this, which I believe I can. I'd like to give a little tug on the other one. See that one's okay. Um, this is a quick test. Verify your circuit failure this time. Not a good circuit, but failure. And uh, we're going to try to repair this. So I'm going to see. Let me take a quick look here and see this connector. All right. So we've got our connector fixed. The um, there are no codes. We will go back through and. Actuation test, output control, evap, purge, and we'll run it. Move the harness around, and as you can see, there's no dropouts, it's not shutting off. Okay, and that'll be that. I wanted to change. I wanted to change the um, pigtail, but there were none available locally, and everybody's got to order it. So I repaired it for now. Uh, this is a, a close. Uh, this is like a family member, a uh, close friend. So um, I ordered the pigtail. When it gets here, uh, we will. You know. We'll replace it just for, uh, just for peace of mind, I guess. But uh, this is a fix. I mean, it's not going to have a problem. I soldered the uh, new leads in, and I, I replaced both of them while I had it apart. And um, that's really it. So I mean, realistically, this uh, this could go out and have no issues. But um, you know, just for the sake of, like I said, peace of mind, we're going to replace the pigtail regardless. And uh, That'll happen when it gets in, but I just wanted to show you guys this is a fix. Uh, there's no more dropouts or anything. I had I take the, I took the scope off already, uh, but uh, there were no dropouts after I did the repair. And you can see that it, as it works here, as it's uh, functioning, when I turn it on by bi-directional control, it does not drop out uh, when I move the harness. So uh, it was quite obvious, though, uh, from you know from what you saw. The as soon as I pulled on that wire, it broke. So. Um, I just thought this might help somebody to do some quick diagnostic testing. Uh, it's um, nothing extravagant here, just uh, common sense. Circuit issue, check the circuit. Uh, the, you know, just because the circuit is working when you initially test it does not mean the circuit's good. Uh, you can have a solenoid that has uh, you know a problem internally, um, or you can have a wiring issue like this. Uh, luckily. Uh, this one was a simple one because it was very close. The brake was very close to the connector, which happens often, and we were able to find it quick. Okay, using the scope, though, uh, gives you that little bit of advantage because you can watch both sides of the solenoid at the same time, and you can immediately pick up which side is losing the power feed, meaning uh, you have power going in to the solenoid. It goes through the windings and then out to the computer to the control side. So at rest you'll have 12 volts on both sides, right? Uh, for you guys that don't know, um, you know, the computer's gonna ground the control side. All right, guys, I was just thinking, I'm taking this, uh, this G6 for a ride here. It's going on a little road test. And uh, I was just thinking about something, you know, there's other ways that, I mean, I, I know most of you guys already know this, but there's other ways you could have done this uh, test. I opted to use the scope because uh, it's quick and easy um, to see where I was, you know, to see if I had a connection issue, which we proved, but um, 
I didn't look at a trouble chart or anything like that. I mean, to see, I was I, I was going to before I started doing this part of the video, but I didn't bother. Uh, most likely, if you look at a trouble chart with something like that, it's going to tell you to do a resistance check. Um, normally, I mean, most flow charts go that way. Uh, it's useless for the most part, in my opinion. Uh, more than 90% of the time, it's useless. Uh, but in any case, you could have, if you wanted to, you could have disconnected the uh, the PCM, the connector, found which pin the control uh, is for the for the purge solenoid, and uh, then you could have got your own meter if you don't have a scope, and back probe the connector at the computer, uh, disconnect the solenoid, and back probe the. Uh, the, the correct pin, <clears throat> the correct pin at the solenoid, which is the same wire, which is the control side. Look at your resistance on the meter and do a wiggle test, basically up the harness until you find out where the resistance goes open, right? Where you have a problem. Uh, that's where you, that's where you would have the problem, right? So you would have found it at the, you know, same spot. Obviously, it's broke. But my point being that there's multiple ways to achieve the same goal. Um, for us in the field, anytime we're trying to fix something or diagnose something, we want to get to the root cause of the problem as quickly as possible. And doing that, uh, you know, doing different types of testing gives us the ability to uh, to do that quickly, right? You know what I mean? As, as we gain experience with different systems and different testing methods, we become more. Uh, we become, we become better at uh, figuring out which tests to perform to get us to the root cause quicker. I mean, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, another way you could have did this as well, you could have, um, you could have put a test light to ground, disconnected the computer side, disconnected the solenoid side, get the... Uh, same thing with as you would with the ohm meter. You would, you're going to go into the pin at the computer and the, you know the control side on the computer uh, pin, and you're going to go to the uh, wire at the solenoid connector. Back probe it uh, with a test light if you wanted to, and then um, you can use a power probe or you can use a jumper, a fused jumper wire from battery, and put power through from the computer side of the harness all the way through that wire. The light will light up, obviously. And then you can start doing your wiggle, wiggle, wiggle test. Excuse me, that way. And when the light goes out or starts to flicker, you know you have the issue close at hand. So the scope is not the only way to do this test. Obviously, um, like I said, I do it this way a lot of times because it's quick and it's simple. Okay, and I don't have to disconnect components, which I like. Uh, I really don't want to go looking for a computer, digging for the pin. Um, you know, finding the appropriate back probe pin to fits in the thing, and it's just, you know, it doesn't, I mean, it's, you do what you have to do, but my point is that it's time consuming, and how much time would I have, how much more time would it have taken me to get to the same result by doing all of that? Um, you, you know what I mean? So, it's about, it's about being thorough, and it's also about being quick. So, um, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, I'm driving the car now just to uh, try to set some of the monitors on it, see what sets, and um, I wanted to road test it anyhow, see how the car feels. Like I said, uh, I haven't, we haven't had the car in the shop for uh, quite a few months. She hasn't been in, uh, so I want to make sure that the car is good, there's no issues, and we'll give it back to her. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to go over that. Uh, because I know a lot of guys say, oh, you should have did this, or you should have did that, or you could have did this. Yeah, well, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, as the old saying goes. Um, same thing with this type of stuff. There's not always just one way or one method to test a circuit or a system or what have you. And the more, it's like having, uh, it's like having scan tools. You can never have enough, right? Uh, same thing. Uh, having different testing methods, you can never have enough. So... I named, I gave you three. With that said, just have knowledge of the circuit, know, uh, knowledge of how, um, you know, how the circuit works, and go that go that route to diagnose it. But the one thing I was going to warn you guys about that I was just thinking about, the part that I was talking about where I said you can jump 
power into this into the circuit. Be really careful if you t if you choose that method, okay? Unless you unless you're really experienced, like you know what I mean, your attack or whatever, you know what you're doing. Uh, be really careful with that method because if you do something like that and you are in the wrong pin on the PCM and you don't have the PCM disconnected or you're in the wrong pin in general on the PCM and you spike another module with voltage that isn't supposed to get 12 volts or ground, whatever the case may be, you uh, potentially can do a whole lot more damage than you're going to do good, all right? <clears throat> so just be careful about jumping things with power and ground. Um, you know, I, I, you know, when we're on the subject, actually, a lot of guys talk about the power probe, and they don't like it. I see guys post a lot of times on, on the power probes and how they hate the tool and all this stuff, but I'll tell you what, uh, the professionals that use the power probe know what it's for, like any circuit tester. Uh, it all, they, all have their t they all have their use, right? If you use it for the wrong, you know, in the wrong circumstance, you can do a lot more damage. So, if you own one of those tools, if you're a do-it-yourself or you're not that experienced, um, they, they are invaluable in my opinion. You can do a lot of things with them, they can save you a lot of aggravation and a lot of time. But, know, know the capabilities of the tool and know the dangers of using the tool in the wrong circumstance. So that's just one piece of advice I want to give you guys. If you put, um, yeah, you know, if you unplug the computer and you figure, oh, the computer's unplugged, I'm safe, I'm going to jump a wire, and you're in the wrong pin, some of these computer pins are real small, you can easily miscalculate which one you want to go into. Uh, if you do that, you can you can have a big problem. So, you know, just, just a word of advice, okay? Uh, I don't like that method uh, just for that reason alone, that you can become... Uh, distracted or you can just miss the pin or whatever you know what I mean you got to be very careful when you do that so uh, I think the way that I showed is the least intrusive and the quickest way to do this okay um, if you don't have a scope you can do it with a multimeter as well uh, to do it the way I did it you would need two multimeters obviously because you need to be into each you know each side of the wire but you can do it that way so you know um, so that's it guys. I'm gonna go back in with this thing and uh, I think we're gonna call it a day because it's pouring now. It's getting late in the day and I'm tired and I honestly just want to go home and go to bed. <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. See you later.